What's going on dudes, Liebensmute here. Welcome back to another Divinity Original Sin 2 video. Today I'm gonna to talk about the 20, yes I said 20, basics that you need to know before you start Divinity Original Sin 2. Are you thinking about possibly purchasing it or did you already buy it and you just wanna give it a try but it's been sitting in your Steam backlog forever? Well, let's talk about some things you need to know before you start. Let's get right into that. All right, so point number one we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about what is a CRPG. Divinity Original Sin 2 is a CRPG but you're wondering, why is it a CRPG? Isn't it just an RPG? Well, CRPG is apparently a really old, meaning for RPG, that stands for Computer Role Playing Game. And Divinity Original Sin 2 is a tactical CRPG. It's just a subgenre of RPG, kind of like how there's a lot of different subgenres for metal. It does take a, roughly about 60 to 70 hours when you focus on the main story of Divinity Original Sin 2. And when you're focusing on the main story as well as side quests, it can take you anywhere between 100 to 160 hours to complete it. So there is a lot of gameplay in this game if you're just focusing on one campaign specifically. All right, for point number two, we're gonna talk about a little bit about character creation. Um, I did cover this in my other video that I released not too long ago. So for character creation, you do wanna remember that you aren't stuck with one specific class. Even if you hit this build preset right here, it doesn't lock you into being a rogue because what you can do with this is you can go to preset and you can change your abilities right here. If you want to stick with rogue and you're just like, oh, I want to be called a rogue, but this only changes the weapons that you start with on the ship in the very beginning. You can go ahead and switch out a scoundrel here and put it in, let's say, Hydrosophist, go back, and you can edit your skills right here and instead choose what skills that you want to start out with. So see, I still have the build preset rogue. I'll end up getting daggers when I first get out. And then I've still got these Hydrosophist skills that I begin with. So basically your build only determines what weapons that you start out with. All right, so right here, I'm gonna start with the wizard preset. I'm gonna go ahead and actually change up my talents here, or not my talents, my preset, in order to make it so that I instead do only warfare because I want to show you guys how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and make it Warfare. I'm going to add on Warfare skills here. And then I'm going to start the game. And then once I get down and over to the weapons box, I'll be right back. All right, guys, remember how I had that wizard preset? It looks like I ended up getting the wands, even though I have Warfare skills. So remember, choosing a preset only determines what things you get in this chest. That is all that determines. Tanks are also not very reliable as a class in this game unless you have it modded to where enemies do select your character because tanks as a whole they do have more health as well as more armor however enemies are smart enough in this game to target the weakest people and not your tanks because they know that they can take out the weaker links first when you're also thinking about what kind of character you want to create you also want to think about whether or not you want to create a custom character or if you want to stick with an origin character i would always recommend for people beginning their first time start with an origin character because it does provide more story for the people who are playing the game as they have predetermined paths that are given and they also have voice acting in relations with other characters that are origin characters as well as other npcs in the game while custom characters do not you don't want to create a character that's simply just support you want to make sure that they're able to to do quite a bit of damage because in divinity damage is king and you want to make sure that they do have a few support spells a good one to think of here is the fighter preset that already comes with battle stomp which is used for crowd control the bouncing shield which is based off of the amount of armor that your shield does provide and then you've also got fortify here which is a support spell to give you more physical armor you do want to think about what kind of characters and what kind of party composition that you want if you want to have it just two people like you're playing with another person and you just want to control one character each you can go ahead and do the lone wolf talent here which gives you a big buff to your damage as well as your armor allowing you to get to play together with just two people now, if you don't do Lone Wolf, you can also go with a composition of four party members, but I don't recommend starting with just one character as a solo and going Lone Wolf, and I don't recommend a party of three people only, as that'll kind of gimp your damage and make it easier for the enemies to take you out. And finally, before I get out of the character creation, you also want to keep in mind that with a gift bag mod called Fort Joy Mirror, you can actually have a, a magic mirror that allows you to respec and change your character in Fort Joy instead of having to wait until Act 2. 
But remember, if you don't like your character, you can always respec later. You don't have to restart the game if you don't want to. Another point I want to bring up is also in one of my other videos that I released. It also says that there is a bedroll within the cabins here on the first ship that you begin in. There's a couple right here, and then I just picked up another one right here. Make sure you use your bedrolls outside of combat because it will completely heal your character every time, even the rest of your party. And there are also some gift bag features here that you can add that will make it so that you use the bedroll and it resurrects your characters if they're dead. It'll save you some resurrection scrolls and I feel like it's pretty useful sometimes if you just want to kind of have an easier time. Divinity Original Sin 2 is also a pretty difficult game to deal with at times. Just make sure that whenever you're going into it that you save often. You can actually have a quick save button if you're on keyboard and mouse located at F5 that will quick save your game just like that and it'll say quick save successful and when you go and check your saves it'll be a quick save option. Now if you move this way it'll auto save before key story points but it doesn't happen all the time. So you do want to make sure that you're saving frequently because you can still get into fights without the game auto saving beforehand and you don't want to lose all your progress because that can be pretty demeaning to you. Next thing we're going to talk about is going to be scrolls. Scrolls are actually one-time use items that you can create or find in the game, and they allow you to cast certain spells for only 2 AP each during combat or also outside of combat, which doesn't cost AP. But they allow you to cast any spells that your characters don't currently have. So like, let's say this character right here, he doesn't have fireball. I can actually use this fireball scroll and cast fireball anywhere I need to, and it'll be consumed upon use. So you can actually craft some really good scrolls in the game that can be used at any time to get you out of any bad situations that you may be in. Also remember that scrolls can be used when a, when a skill is on cooldown. So for fireball, if my character did a fireball and I had already used it, I can use the fireball scroll again to cast it once more. Next thing I'm going to talk about is weapon and armor levels. Armor levels don't have any negative effects whenever you equip them and they're a higher level. Like for my character right here, he is currently level 2. If I were to equip this level 3 armor, it would not have any negative effects. However, if I were to equip this level 3 weapon right here, my accuracy just went from 95% to 75%. I'll go ahead and equip this wand again, which is level 1, and my accuracy went back up to 95%, and when equipping the mallet, it goes down to 75%. It does say the weapon level is too high. So be sure whenever you're finding armor and weapons not to equip a weapon that is too high level for you or else you'll face an accuracy penalty in combat. For crafting, you can actually make a lot of different things and you don't need the recipes in order to be able to make something. Like right here, I don't have any recipes in order to make an arrow shaft. You can see it all right here, everything that I've got. If I go ahead and combine a short stick as well as some sort of knife, right here, I can combine it and it will end up making arrow shafts. So you don't actually need the recipe and see, it actually put the recipe right in here. You don't need a recipe in order to be able to make something. So if you know the two things you need to combine, you can actually just go ahead and throw it together in the combination crafting part and it will make the item that you desire. All right, another thing I'm gonna talk about here is Lore Master. So you ever wanna know a lot about enemies that you see? You're just like, oh, how do they know everything about me? How do they know what I'm weak to? Well, guess what? It's because somehow all of them have Lore Master even when they don't. Because if you look at the examine part right here, with Lore Master, you can see what their resistances are and what all they have. The higher your Lore Master level, the more you can see for their stats, but you can see what talents each enemy has or each NPC and you can also see what resistances and stats they also have. So if you're ever curious on how they know that you're an undead, just know they probably have Lore Master even when they don't. And keep in mind later on in the game, whenever you get blue, purple items, you can actually use Lore Master to identify those items without having to spend gold at vendors in order to have them identified. So you can go ahead and find an item and immediately identify it to equip it. And just as the game journal intends, just remember when you're going throughout the game, you actually have a lot of different paths and many story quests and many other side quests as well in order to achieve the ending that you want. So just remember, you're not stuck on one path in particular. You can actually find a lot of different creative and crafty ways to get out of the place that you're in, especially for joy. When you're in the beginning of the game, you're wondering, how do I level up fast enough? What if I keep missing quests? Why am I missing all this XP? Well, think about it this way. At the very beginning of the game, it's very easy to level up. And once you get toward the end of the game, you will have millions and millions of XP 
that you need in order to level up. So just keep in mind that in the beginning of the game, you don't need to make sure that you do everything. It's best if you do some things, but you don't have to be a completionist and get everything because by the end of the game, you should be up to scale with the end game bosses that you need to beat with the level that you have just by completing most of the, I mean, all of the main story and some of the side quests and you don't need to complete everything. So don't feel like you're missing out on the game and don't be afraid to go back and do more if you'd want to. Even at the end of the game, no matter what you do, even if you feel like you're killing off some very important characters, just keep in mind that no matter what you do, if you decide to go full murder hobo or complete pacifist, you can almost always reach the end of the game and not be barred off from it. So don't be afraid to do what you actually really want to do because that's always what I recommend to everybody. I know some people may be wondering, how can I choose between these wonderful characters and their voice acting? I'm, a, I'm scared I'm going to miss out on some of the story or something else I may want. Well, guess what? You only are able to choose up to four origin characters if you have a four player composition party in order to go with you into Act 2. Once you go past Act 1 and get off the ship at the end, just remember that the other characters will be completely lost to you, so be sure to pick the ones that you really want, but don't fight too much over it because, again, you can always replay the game if you'd want to. Next up, I'm going to talk about the style of combat that Divinity uses. So for combat, it goes based off of who has the highest initiative. It determines the turn order in which you go, and Divinity uses a round-robin turn style. So if the enemy goes first, your character with the highest initiative will go next, and then after that, it'll be another enemy that goes, and then another one of your characters that goes. So if the enemy has a higher initiative than your highest character, then they will go first. So what you want to do in order to increase your initiative is increase your wits. Wits does increase your critical chance and your initiative and makes it so that you can go first before your enemy. In some fights, that is crucial in order to succeed. As you can see right here, the Red Prince is the highest initiative out of everybody, and he goes first. Next is the second highest, which is the Ancient Tainted Turtle, and then Los goes because she is the next highest, and then it continues to go in between each enemy and each companion that we have. So just remember this whenever you're going into fights, that the highest initiative character will go first followed by an enemy. Next, I'm going to talk about how some of the combat works with the armor system. So with the armor system, you have physical and magical armor. With physical armor, you do physical damage to it and it depletes until it reaches zero and then you can start doing damage straight to the health of an enemy or another character that you have on your team. As with magic armor, you can do magic damage and that will reduce the armor value of that until you reach the health as well. Once you get past the armor values, you can start using crowd control in order to control your enemies and make them miss their turns. So for instance, with these enemies right here, the Ancient Tainted Turtles, they don't have any magic armor. So I can go ahead and do just straight magic damage to them without them being able to resist it, as you can see here. Now, if I were to do something physical to them, like let's say teleport them, it would actually do damage to them right here with physical first. As you can see, it did some physical damage to both of them and now their physical armor is depleted. Just remember that in this game, crowd control is very, very important. You wanna make sure that you're trying to control how your enemies are moving. So with this, if I were to cast rain on these enemies right here, or if I were to make sure that they were wet, then I could either cast hail strike to freeze them, or I can cast electric discharge to shock them and stun them for their next turn so that they miss their turn coming up. So if I were to cast stun on this turtle right here while he was wet, he would instead miss this next turn right here and then have to wait until after all of the other characters have moved another time. Finally guys, I'm going to talk about why maybe you should consider restarting if you really want to because Fort Joy is really easy to reach. Because remember, everybody likes to call the game a Fort Joy simulator because of how much you're in Fort Joy. If you look at some of these Reddit posts right here, can someone explain this compulsive need to restart the game to me? Why do so many people restart the game at the end of Act 2? That cat made me restart the campaign. Ridiculous if you think about it. It's my first playthrough, and by the time I hit shore, I almost restarted to pick a better perk. Need help getting out of Fort Joy. I struggle to accept the party I've created. Main issue is I always think blank would be better. At that point, I stress the start over. I think I have escaped the boat 40 plus times. I have yet to get through the port. Fort. Don't be afraid to restart, guys. It's so close to the beginning of the game and you can test out so many different things, and I know it's great to test out a lot of different builds, but don't be afraid to restart. 
just because you feel like your build is getting boring or you might not like the, the simplicity of it. Restart as much as you want to, don't be afraid to, but remember that you can always respec yourself anytime in Fort Joy with the Magic Mirror mod, or you can also respec immediately once you get on the ship leading to Act 2. Alright guys, that's all the basics I have for you today. If you liked the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you found the information useful, leave a comment for me if you want me to add more. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.